Hey everybody, it's Ben here. It's the day after Christmas. Uh, we had our white Christmas and now today it's sunny and above freezing. So all the snow is melting off uh, the garage. I've got off work and let's go do a tour of the garage as it is so far. Okay, so here we go. It's uh, nice and sunny out. If you look, there is the shadow of the pine tree. I've already talked about that a little bit, um, how that will affect solar. And that's because of that pine tree right there, which is uh, pretty tall, but again, uh, we're just past the solstice. So this is literally the worst case scenario in terms of uh, any shading on the roof. Um, I've got my car outside. I have temporary 240 volt power going to the garage, so I can still use my level two car charger. Uh, the garage is sheathed. Uh, we also, just the other day, we got the ends filled in. So if we look up top, uh, I don't have snow and everything coming in uh, the upstairs anymore. It's OSB on the outside. It has more or less a house-style foundation. Did have to dig down deep, put down a footing, put in a couple of layers of concrete block. Uh, and then there's insulation, uh, a little bit on the outside, some foam insulation. And then under the concrete slab, there's two inches of foam and around the perimeter of the slab as well. And part of doing all of that is I've got weird water issues on my property. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but here's my nice insul insulated concrete slab. And this is just a uh, concrete apron to uh, connect the, uh, the garage to the driveway. And right here, this is about half an inch higher than this, whereas a couple of weeks ago they were dead flush with each other. Uh, same over here, I've got almost five eighths of an inch difference. And that's just because of the, the water that exists in the ground and the, the, the changes in temperature. And because uh, the concrete slab has a real foundation and this doesn't, you can see how much uh, things move around. The garage does have two doors, not one large one. Couple of reasons for this. Uh, one is just style, that's what I had before, but the other thing is um, by opening one door instead of one large one, uh, keeps more of the air inside. The other thing I'm taking a look at is actually having a garage door on each, but glazing one garage door in so that uh, in the winter I can just open that garage door and basically have it turn into a sunroom, have the sun shine in on those nice sunny winter days like we have right here right now. Uh, then also on the left is going to be a man door. I've temporarily just have that covered with plywood uh, just to keep the snow and everything out. Uh, so that will be a door that I can walk through without having to open an entire garage door, which is uh, what I had to do previously. The roof is 5 8 inch plywood. Uh, the reason why is it's, it's going to be a nice solid roof for mounting the solar panels on. I should be able to mount uh, 21, possibly 24, solar panels up there of the 60 cell variety, uh, somewhere between, say, 250 and 280 watts each for about a 5,000 watt system. And right now, there's a artificial roofing felt up there. Uh, standing seam metal roofing is going to go over the top of that. Uh, the siding on the garage is going to be cement board. It's going to be a style to match the house. I'm trying to match the house as much as I can, other than going with a metal roof instead of an asphalt one. So inside the garage, uh, it's all the space is kind of taken up right now by ladders and uh, construction equipment and all that sort of thing. I did toss a little temporary lighting in here so I could see at night, and this one LED shop light does a pretty good job of uh, lighting up quite the large area. Uh, as you can see, it's still open at this point, not insulated or anything like that. I do have my temporary 240 volt power. I've got a uh, uh, circuit breaker box under here and I do have, uh, this is an outdoor rated J1772 level two EV charger. So I can uh, charge my car at uh, full power. And then over here, this is where all the PEX comes out of the concrete. So when I'm done, what I'll be able to do is run that PEX right up onto the wall and have a micro boiler and the circulating pump right there and then that will circulate heat through the concrete floor and radiate up and keep my garage warm enough to do some work out here. Uh, we also got the upstairs floored. 
before we did the roof, which was nice because it uh, gave us a place to stand. And we do now also have the hole cut out for where the drop-down staircase is going to go. That's one of those uh, kind of attic access style staircases. Unfortunately, uh, where I am and the property lines and everything mean that the zoning does not allow for a permanent staircase for me. Other thing I did was I designed it so that uh, basically you walk in through the man door and then you can walk straight up the staircase into the upstairs while not interfering with room for parking the cars or workbenches or anything else. So because the south side of the garage is really all doors, there's not a whole lot uh, to hold the roof up. So we need to use this engineered beam across here. This is basically uh, plywood in effect, except it's uh, very tall and very thick and nice and solid. And this is kind of what holds up the whole south end of the garage. Now, of course, the downside of that is you can't drill holes in it vertically and run electrical. So for example, I can't have any light switches right here um, unless I surface mounted them. So what I'll do is I'll have the setup so you come in through the man door, we'll have the uh, breaker box and electric outlets right there. Uh, uh, electric microboiler for the floor heat will be right over there. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll put in a electrical box right here for a future electric car charger. But I think what I'm probably gonna do is end up taking this car charger and mounting it on that far wall there. Uh, power for it will just run through the ceiling here because uh, then that way I can pull my Mitsubishi straight in and the charger will be right next to the charge port on the car. Uh, let's take a look upstairs. So this is the upstairs of the garage. Um, the floor area is about half the total area of the downstairs and that's mostly because of the roof of the pitch. Once you get over so far it's it's very low. Uh, the side walls here are about four feet tall. And then you can see that uh, there's a flat ceiling in the middle. Uh, that's about six foot six, and it's about four foot wide. And I'm actually able to stand over to about, uh, about right here. So I actually get, uh, um, I'm six foot tall, and this gives me enough headroom not just in the middle, but even into the, the slopey part, just a little bit. Um, now I've been trying to figure out how I wanna do the lighting in here. And I think what I wanna do is put some can lights up in these spaces here. So I've got some of these clamp lamps that I, I put up just to experiment with uh, to see if they, they put out as much light as I want and also what the spacing will be. So I'm looking at probably putting uh, six can fixtures up here. And then of course, there's a window in either end uh, that matches the style of the house that also allows for cross ventilation. So in the summer, I can just open both windows and get some air up here. Uh, of course, this entire thing is gonna be all insulated. Um, the exact style of insulation, um, I haven't quite decided yet. It would be great to be able to do foam insulation, uh, but that is very expensive. So that's about where we are on the garage project right now. I'll try to keep you updated as we go. I've been shooting a lot of time lapse because it's an easy way for me to film what's going on while still being able to work instead of running a camera the whole time. Uh, hope you enjoy the project. Feel free to comment, say hi. Thanks. Take care and stay charged up.